Hello, Vetiver Vibe listeners. I'm very excited to share that in this week's episode, we were able to interview Melissa from Lemon Bomb Coaching. She goes over all the benefits of having a coach, how this can help you in your life, how this can help you in your business. Coaches are such an important part to help us see so much within ourselves and to project us forward, to stay on task and to keep going forward. We hope that you can grab all the nuggets of information in this podcast and keep moving forward yourself. Enjoy learning all about coaching with Melissa. Welcome to the Vetiver Vibes podcast. We're your hosts, Nikki, Rachel, and Rhonda, certified clinical aromatherapists coming to you from Ontario, Canada, and on the internet everywhere. This episode is brought to you by Accentria, a leading online school for aromatherapy. Accentria is your go-to source for clinical aromatherapy certification programs that are recognized by NAHA and the Canadian Federation of Aromatherapists. If you want to learn more about Aroma Massage Course, check out their website, www.schoolofessentria.com. We're excited that you've given your time to be here with us, knowing you'll get the best essential oil scoop. Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Vetiver Vibes. I have the amazing benefit of introducing Melissa this week. Melissa is a transformational coach and registered aromatherapist. She's a member of the Alliance of International Aromatherapists and is the mentor for the regional state representatives. She was listed as one of the most influential people in aromatherapy in 2022 and is a writer and international speaker. She has been married to her husband for 33 years, has four grown children and five grandchildren. She currently lives on the beautiful tropical island of Guam with her husband, three cats and a service dog. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Nikki. I'm so thrilled to be here. Today, we're going to dive into coaching because that is what you do. But before we dive into that, one question we always like to ask our guests is, what is your favorite aroma or oil? Which I know can be a loaded question and it doesn't need to be of all time, but maybe just in this moment, however you want to look at the question. Well, those are two different things for me. I do have a favorite aroma and I do have a favorite essential oil. So we'll start with the aroma. My favorite aroma takes me all the way back to childhood where we lived in upstate New York and we had a wood burning stove in the basement. And on Christmas morning, my mom would get up before everyone else and she would make homemade cinnamon rolls and bake them on the wood burning stove. So like the scent of cinnamon rolls, yes. Like if you walk through the mall and you smell a Cinnabon, there's a little bit there, but you add in the smell of the wood burning stove and the cinnamon rolls blended together. That's my all-time favorite scent. Um, But my favorite essential oil, hello, vetiver. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So (laughs) like, I was like, oh, vetiver vibes. I love the name of your podcast because I just, I just love vetiver. I was introduced to it when I was in school. And just from that day forward, I don't, it's just, there it is. It's just wonderful. And because it's my favorite, if I have to pick one oil as an all-time favorite, which is hard to do, vetiver is also mine. But I often get the comment of like, ew, really? Do you ever get that comment? Not really. I, most of the people that I come in contact with, they're like, I've never heard of that essential oil. I mean, other than aromatherapists, right? Aromatherapists know what it is, but general public, they're like, I've never even heard of that essential oil. I'm like, let me introduce you. Oh my goodness. It's this earthy kind of sweet vanilla kind of blend of smells. And it does all of these amazing things like help your nerves calm down and just ground you let me introduce you so to me I always describe it as rolling in a mound of mulch that's what it reminds me of we had like I grew up my parents have huge yards and everything so there was always mulch and honestly it reminds me of like working in the mulch as a child which like that earthy deep earthy aroma I'm just like oh yes just like slather all over me (laughs) I get it (laughs) awesome 
All right, so now let's dive in to our topic for this week. Um, I would love to know, how did you get into aromatherapy? Again, a two-part question. How did you get into aromatherapy? And then how did you get into coaching? So it's so everyone you want to, I don't know if one mixes into the other for your story, so... They do. It's kind. It's kind of a, a slow fade. Okay, so um, I started. Gosh, my introduction to aromatherapy was back in the early 1990s. I was deep inside my mom bubble. That's what I call it, my mom bubble. I have no idea what was popular in the early 1990s. No idea what songs were popular, movies, nothing. I got nothing on that time period because I was so engrossed in raising my kids. And at that time, my mom was going to school for aromatherapy and she kept like trying to give me these things. And I'm just, I didn't have the bandwidth. I had no interest in what she was selling and she wasn't selling. She was actually in school for aromatherapy. She was becoming an aromatherapist, but I was just, it was just overwhelming for me. I couldn't even, cause I'm trying to raise four kids, you know, I'm just, I'm done. I, I got nothing left. I got nothing left at the end of the day. Um, but fast forward to the early 2000s, my kids are practically grown, you know, two of them are already on their own. The other two are high school age now. And, and, and I start, went back to work and I worked for my chiropractor in shirts, Texas shout out, but, um, I started going through menopause mm -hmm. and I started experiencing anxiety and I started experiencing, like this, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it, but like my world literally felt like it was falling apart. Um, and menopause is different for everyone. Please. Anybody who's not there yet. Don't hear that and get afraid. Every journey is unique. Mine is nowhere near like my mother's was nor my sister's, you know, mine is unique, but like my world totally started falling apart, but here I am working at the chiropractor. So I'm getting physical care. I was getting that physical care. And mm -hmm. then all of these friends of mine who were coming into the office, they're like, oh, you're having anxiety. Smell this. Oh, you're dealing mm -hmm. with this. Smell this. Oh, just smear this all over your body. And I was like, okay, I recognize these bottles. Mm -hmm. Recognize the bottles. My mom tried to give me those bottles. I remember these bottles. But I also remember my mom went to school. So- yeah. There's got to be more than just smell this, smear this on your body and everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. And I started to look around, like, where could I get education on this? Because it didn't sit right with me to just hear, smell this and everything will be fine. Yes. I don't even know what's in that particular little bottle that you're handing me. Thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for trying to help me, but I don't know what this is. Mm -hmm. So I started searching online for schools. Oh, and by the way, you know, back in the nineties, there was no online schooling. So this was new territory for me. Uh, I'd yeah. never been to an online school before. And I found um, the American college of healthcare sciences out in Portland, Oregon. And I really liked their model. I liked how they taught. I loved having deadlines. I need my deadlines. Uh, I need to know that I have this much time to accomplish the work. It's very mm -hmm. important for me. So I signed up with the American College of Healthcare Sciences. But what I loved about their curriculum is it wasn't just, here's the aromatherapy information. It was very holistically minded, brought in the whole mind, body, spirit. And I just loved it. I thrived, loved it. Um, when I went to college right out of high school, um, do so, you know, wasn't so great <laughs> because I didn't enjoy the material, this material I enjoyed. And I just, I thrived. I loved it. Did great, graduated, hung out my shingle and started working with clients. But what I realized that I truly love, okay. Essential oils. I love, but what I really love is digging deep mm -hmm. and figuring out what what is the reason that you're coming to me? Mm -hmm. What has happened that's caused whatever issue that you're dealing with? And as an aromatherapist, I would work with anyone, you know, uh, stress, skin issues, um, really just about anything, uh, joint problems, pain. I would, I would work with anyone, but the common denominator in everyone that I worked with was the digging deep part. Yep. And I would spend more time 
coaching them through whatever the issue was. And then remember at the end, oh, oh, and I have a blend that I could make for you (laughs) that could help with that. So it was like the digging and the coaching part was just natural. I didn't even like, I, I hadn't gone to school for coaching at that time, but helping people and pointing them in new directions and drawing things out of them was what was really lighting me up. And then we moved from the United States over to the tropical island of Guam five days before the entire world shut down. (laughs) And I was like, well, all of my aspirations for connecting with the community here, uh, teaming up with the Surahanu, which are the natural healers, um, teaching classes, none of that happened. Yeah, Nothing happened. So I was like, well, I love coaching. Let me see what there is for coaching. So I found the Health Coach Institute and they have their flagship program, which is become a health coach. Mm -hmm. So I signed up for it and it was all review. It was everything that I learned at American College of Healthcare Sciences Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the health part went. And then there was the coaching part. Loved the coaching part, signed up for their advanced program, did the whole advanced program. And that's kind of where I've steered is more towards the coaching because I love digging deep and not just getting to the root of the problem, but helping people transform whatever it is that has kept them stuck and spinning their wheels and never moving forward. That's what I love. Yeah. And then I, I, I marry the essential oils in there in that. Uh, if I'm working with a client and something comes up and it's like, there's an aromatic solution, there's an aromatic support, there's something we can do. Mm-hmm. Then I, I do a aromatherapy consult with them. Doesn't count against their coaching visits. I do an aromatherapy consult with them and create something that'll help them move forward in that way as well. Nice. I love that. And I resonate with you with the digging deeper. I'm trained as a child and youth care worker, addiction counselor. Um, and yeah, the the digging deeper, there's always stuff going on and peeling back that onion and seeing what's happening. It's, it's, it's nice. It's nice to see the people moving forward and seeing yes. the progress that they do. Um, it makes such a difference. And being able to marry the aromatherapy aspect in with it, giving them that support is so amazing. Ah. I love it. What a great story. Thank you. Thank you. So as we go with coaching, can you tell us a little bit, so what's involved with coaching? Like, what does, what does it really mean to get the support of a coach? What does it mean to get the support of a coach? That is a really great question. So there's so many different kinds of coaches out there. Oh my word. The world is exploding with coaches right now. It is. I think the pandemic sent a lot of people searching yep. and um, we all we all have something to give the world. So I feel like coaching is where a lot of people have landed as a result of being locked down for three years, yeah, two years, that. wherever you live, you know, where yeah. it's di- yeah. <laughs> different for where we live, but um But the world is exploding right now. What it means to work with a coach is having someone who can support you, first of all, in Mm -hmm. your goals, your dreams, your desires, uh, someone that can stretch you towards those goals and dreams and desires, because there's a part of our brain that does not want to change. It is a very, very strong part of our brain, probably the strongest part of our brain. It's the part that developed first, and it's the part that helps you survive. This part of your brain does not want to change at all. It wants. And I like to how stay. you put the stretch shit. It That's, stays. I love that. It term. wants. It wants to stay exactly where it is. That part of your brain is like a, a stationary light pole. Yeah. Right. It does not move. It does not want to move. But what we have to do as coaches is wrap that rubber band around that light pole and start stretching. Like, let's stretch towards your next goal. Let's stretch towards the next thing that you want. But if you don't have the support 
to maintain that stretch and go further, which is the supportive coach, you're going to snap right back to where you were. I'm sitting through this great business challenge right now, and they're giving us so much information and it's amazing. And everybody's on fire and all this stuff. But I guarantee seven days from now, the majority of the people in this challenge will snap right back to where they were and they're going to be stuck again. If you don't have this type of support from someone out, it's really important to have someone outside of your family supporting you because we, we have all these beliefs and identities wrapped up in our families and we believe that they're not going to support us in the way that we need. We're afraid to speak to them about the things that we want and all of these things. So a coach supports you, a coach stretches you and a coach holds you accountable. Yes. In a way, that's a big thing in a way that no one in your inner circle will yeah because your inner circle wants you to be happy and they want you to you know they want everything to be easy for you yeah. and a coach is not interested in easy nope or and that sometimes calls you out and so if you don't want to be called out i know a lot of people that's their motivating factor it's like okay no i don't want them to ask me and then i look like I failed myself in not doing the task. So if I have to say no forever, if I can say, yes, I did that. It's like that extra gratification. Right. And sometimes, sometimes like thinking back to ACHS, I need deadlines. Yep. I need someone to hold me accountable to -hmm. accomplish the thing. And that's what a coach does. And when you work for yourself, you're holding yourself accountable, which doesn't always work. It, I know myself running a few home businesses, one always gets put on the back burner yes. and, and I'm okay with that. And I recognize that. And I'm totally okay with that because I'm just letting myself down at that point. Whereas if I do it in another business, well, I'm letting partners down and that I won't do. Right. But, but when you're, work, when you're a solopreneur, you're sitting in your little home office, you know, working away on the things. Oh, Oh, that's right. I needed to clean the litter box. Let me go do that. Oh yeah. Everything else looks shiny and great to do. I haven't taken, I haven't taken my walk today. I should probably go take my walk, Right. which are good. They're not bad things. Those are not bad things. But when you're a solopreneur, no one else is holding you accountable to accomplish the things that need to be done for your business to be a success. Exactly. For your business to thrive. A coach will do that for you. Yeah. So when do you recommend someone gets a coach? Like someone who's just starting out business, someone who's been around for years, like, cause we have, you know, people have to start somewhere and they don't know where to start versus people who've been doing it for 10 years, but almost hit a plateau or just want to move up to the next level. Like there's so many different areas that people can be in business. Is there a when should, better when should Yeah. When should someone hire a coach? If you're sitting there thinking, I'm stuck, I don't know what to do, I don't know what my next step is, Uh, I don't have a clue what I'm supposed to do today, those are all great times to hire a coach. Um, Really, any time is the right time to hire a coach. If you've got that niggling in your brain that I need help, or that niggling that something is not right, I don't know what it is. That's a great time to reach out and find a coach. I do want to encourage all of your listeners, though. There are so many types of coaches that we've already we've already mentioned that. There's business coaches, there's life coaches, there's mindset coaches, there's Is money coach growth for everything coaches. under the sun. Everything under the sun. There's a coach for it. And you may not know what kind of coach you need. Most coaches offer a discovery process of some kind, mm-hmm. uh, whether that's a a call, or you can look on their websites to see what they focus on. There's so many different ways to find a coach. The biggest thing is taking the step to do it. Yep. So looking online, typing in what it is that you need. If Mm -hmm. your coach has optimized their website, they should pop right up. If they haven't, you might have to search a little bit deeper. Um, But scheduling that discovery call, discovery session, clarity call, whatever they happen to call it, because everybody calls it something different and get online with them. I have had discovery calls with coaches myself, like 
looking to hire business coaches and things like that. And I think some people are afraid that if they get on the call, they have to say yes. Yeah. The pressure. There's no pressure. If your coach is pressuring you and it's not comfortable, hang up. <laughs> but yeah. there shouldn't be. The only pressure that you should be feeling is the pressure from yourself. Because a decent coach, a good coach, a coach who is more interested in you than their pocketbook is going to walk you through a process, help you make a discovery, and present you with an offer. Yep. And it's up to you. You're an adult. You can decide for yourself. No one will pressure you but yourself. Yeah. So. And it's a lot easier, I find now, too, because it's not like it's in, in person like it was way back in the day. So it's right. easier to be like, no, I don't resonate with this conversation right now and hang up. I know I did that when looking for a doula. Um, you know, they they were there to coach me through birth. And I was like, yeah, no, our views just don't resonate. And exactly. this is not going to work. And that's OK to say. It's OK to exactly. tell. like. You can't be that person for everyone as a coach and as a client, you're someone who's looking for a coach. You're not going to resonate with everyone. You're not supposed to right. resonate with every single person. You need to find the people who are on the same wavelength as you and get what exactly. you need. Exactly. And during that discovery call, guess what? The coach is doing the same thing. Yeah. They're sitting oh, there yeah. going, are you the kind of person that I want to work with? Are you... Do you have the same types of goals that I'm looking for? It's more than just you're interviewing the coach. The coach is also interviewing you because I mm -hmm. want to make sure I'm working with people that are in alignment with my desires and my goals and my plan, mm -hmm. you know, because if I'm fighting you, nothing will be accomplished. I want to yeah. support you. And I'm, I'm going to want to support people who are looking for the support that I can give. Yeah. Someone who's in it for 110% because they want to up-level yes. themselves, up-level their business. Exactly. Um, and I'm telling and you, you're not going to hire a coach unless you're ready because yeah. it's an investment and it's not, it I'm is. not even just talking about money. Yes. It's a money investment, but you're going to be required time to mm -hmm. show up. You're going to have energy that you're going to have to expend in your coaching sessions. And if you're not ready to give that time, that energy and that money, you're not going to hire a coach. Yeah. But if you are ready and you're ready to go, there are coaches out there. Mm -hmm. No, that's so true. Um, and people need to remember that also, right? Yeah. So the yeah. investment is huge. Yeah. But and the return is great. I was it's gonna say, just... I was just gonna say that the return though, usually I know even myself when I'm doing a coaching in with a coach or a practice or a mastermind group or anything like that. Those are the up-leveling times. Those are when I see a shift in my, and it's not always business, it's, you know, a shift in business, a shift in personal life. There's a shift somewhere happening. It might not always be what I intended. Right. Or and that's for. okay. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was looking to have a shift and it might be something that I needed in that moment or something that, you know, it changed something that moment where, that had an impact in six months down the road, which right. is what I needed. So the way we don't I always look, see what the need is, but you know, the, the way I look does. at coaching, coaching is kind of like um, hiking. Okay. So I think of specifically, there's um, a place in Texas that we would go hiking and it was like, there were a ton of switchbacks. And at the very end of the hike, you're, you're mountaineer, you're climb, you're bouldering to get to the top. I mean, so it's like, it's not like, oh, a nice leisurely hike. We're trying yeah. to climb this mountain. So here's your business. It's this mountain in front of you. And you're trying to hike it by yourself. That's a five hour hike. It's exhausting. My body hurts at the end of it. My feet hurt. I have to pull myself up at the very end. Wouldn't it be nice to have someone who's been on the hike before, who knows the path, who knows the easier ways to get there. Oh, and who can reach back and help you when you're stumbling. Yes. That's your coach. Your coach is the yeah. one that's ahead of you on that same path. And that's the other thing I think is really important when you're looking for a coach to find someone who's been on the path that you want to hike. Yes. Right. So if you are trying to grow your business and you're looking to hire a business coach, 
You want to hire a business coach, it's your business, and who has grown their business. Mm -hmm. Did you know we have a variety of mini courses from pregnancy, children, frankincense, organic skincare, and more. Go to www.schoolofessentria.com to see all the options. The best part is they're only $50 each. See you in a mini course. A trend that I'm seeing, not just among coaches, but in aromatherapy also, is a lot of people um, get their education and then they turn around and want to coach coaches. Yes. Or in the case of aromatherapists, I got my aromatherapy education. Now I want to teach other aromatherapists. I want to yeah. teach other people. And instead of taking the time to grow their business, they just want to turn around and do it, you know, yeah. teach what you they just need learned. that life experience though. Like you without do. that life experience, yeah. you, you can't add to it. Um, right. And that's one thing that I did like with one of our associations, you have to have been graduated at least two years before you could open a school because you need to know the ups and downs, um, right. you know, that that life, live client experience and life right. in general experience to be able to add to, to your own personal life to, to support other people. Right. So, so absolutely. you're going to want to try to find a coach who's been there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and that makes me think when we were talking about, especially your, your mountain, I loved your mountain analogy, but it made me think of highs and lows of business. Yes. And now do you find that there are certain times in the year or certain times in a business forecast almost that there's like consistent highs and lows? And then if there are, how do people stick with it and work through it? The highs and lows of business? Yes. Well, there's always I'm highs and lows. You're right. Transparency. I, I'm a transparent person. I, I do not bill myself as a business coach. I do not track and fork that as far as business goes. Mm -hmm. um, as a health person, like that's kind of my arena is health mm -hmm. and wellness. Um, <laughs> the beginning of the year, everybody yeah. wants to jump on the health bandwagon. And then it kind of tapers off as the year goes on. But then moving into the holidays, I see I see a ramp up of health because mm -hmm. people are like, oh my gosh, cookies are coming. Oh, all the holidays. And I don't want to gain 30 pounds. Yeah. So people start to think about their health again, but through the most of the year, it, it dips down. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But as far as business goes, I don't bill myself as a business coach. So I don't follow those trends as far as ups and downs. Um, but as a life coach, which is what I do, I focus on the life portion of coaching, which let's be honest, encompasses health, mm -hmm. finances, Absolutely. relationships, <laughs> all of Absolutely. big seven, right? It encompasses everything. Um, I, how do you, how do you, how do you keep going in the down times? <sighs> support is vital, whether that's support from family support from friends, support from a coach, support from your business community. Um, support is vital to help you get through those downtimes. Absolutely. And then keeping your focus on the goals. I think as solopreneurs, we end up forgetting our goals. Sometimes mm -hmm. oh, we yeah. forget what our target is and then or why? Yes. And then, and then we just kind of fade away and then come back when things are easy again. Mm -hmm. The only people that fail at business are the people that give up. Yes. So true. Yeah. yeah. And it might take years to build your business. And history shows five years to build yep. a solid business. Um, but the people that give up before five, those are the only ones that actually fail. It is if, and it is, it's just sticking it out because you don't know what's down the road. And um, just use myself, even as an example, when I started, I didn't have a space. So mm -hmm. I did mobile. I had to figure out how to do mobile, which was really hard with two babies at home, like, cause they were very tiny 
children at the time. And, you know, and I struggled and I struggled, but I was like, you know, I'm not giving up. I've rebranded twice, uh, you know, but as, and that's just it. It's if you give up hundred percent, you, you give up, there's no right. way around it. But right. as long as you can stick it out and just make small shifts, just one, one step at a time, small shifts. And, you know, you don't know what's down the road as long as you just keep going. And a lot of times you don't even know what the shift needs to be. No, that's not, but that's, that's honestly, and I know I keep coming back to it, but that's where coaching comes in It is to play because that, oh, it's so, I can't even tell you how amazing it is to be in a coaching session with my own coach. Like I'm not coaching. I'm the, I'm the coachee and they see something that is blatantly obvious that I completely missed because I'm in it. And that old saying, you can't see the forest for the trees. You really can't. You're in the middle of it. You can only see what's right there around you. But someone on the outside looking in goes, girl. Hmm. Who's (laughs) not emotionally invested. Can I tell you what I see? the biggest thing, right? It is. (laughs) Because even like you said earlier, you know, our family and loved ones, they're emotionally invested. So they don't always want to burst the bubble. Right. And they want it, they want it to be easy for us. They They want us to be happy. They want us to feel loved. Encourage us, which is great. But I'm going to be tough for just a second. I don't really care if you feel loved by me. Right? No, it's true. I'm not invested in that way. The way I'm invested is to see you succeed. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it takes ripping off that bandaid and here's the cold, hard truth of, all right, this is what needs to be done. Yes. If you want to help yourself. So, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So now when people are experiencing burnout, because this can often lead to a lot of burnout situations, yes. do you have any suggestions on how someone can work through a burnout? I've been there, been there uh, when I was working for my chiropractor going through menopause my whole body started to shut down. So um, my, I said earlier, it felt like my world was falling apart is because I was falling apart. Mm -hmm. Um, Honestly, burnout, I don't think is our problem. I think boundaries are our problem. Mm -hmm. And we don't, when we don't have solid boundaries for the things in our lives that are important, like you're not getting in here. I don't want those types of people in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't think burnout is our problem. I think boundaries are our problem. We, especially as aromatherapists, we're givers, we're healers. We want everybody to be well. So we give, 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 and there's zero boundary in that. Yep. Zero boundary. So I think the very first step is to learn what your boundaries are, set those boundaries, and then hold those boundaries. Yep. And especially people who are starting businesses or even have been in a business for 10 plus years it's if you're working for yourself you don't want to let your clients down you don't want so you're like an email comes in and it's like oh I need to answer this immediately. oh it's nine even o'clock it's at night 10, let me answer that right and and that's just it too and I mean I go through ups and downs myself of like yep an email comes in at 10 o'clock at night I'm in bed reading I'll flip over to the email and I'll answer it sometimes. And then I'm like, why did I just do that? (laughs) I'm like, it could have waited until 9 a.m. the next day. What was it that caused you to do that though? What was it that caused you to flip over and read and answer that email? Yeah. And me, for me, it's always like, oh, it's something small and easy. I can just deal with this tonight. And then I don't have to deal with it in the morning. So then I'm like, okay, great. I can just, I'm still awake. I'll just deal with this now. Um, but it is, it's you, people need to set their boundaries of this is when it's work life, family life, because then I remember my kids saying, you know, why are you always on your phone working? You're yeah. always working and hearing like your five-year-old say that I'm just like, Oh, that's yeah. My kids I feel like a horrible mother right now. And I need to stop answering emails. My kids came to me one time we were home. We homeschooled. My kids came to me one time. And they said, and it was almost like in unison. That's the way it felt. It felt like a chorus of my kids. And they're like, yeah. why don't we ever do anything fun anymore? Right. And I was like, oh, I suck as a parent. 
the mom guilt is strong to find that balance. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it really was. And it was just because I, I was, I was so focused. Yeah. Gotta get, gotta get these kids, you know, smart, gotta get them capable, you know, that everything else there was, there was no boundary around it. Yep. That's all it was. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Okay. We're doing something fun next week, guys. Yeah. So, yeah. But it was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta figure out, I don't like the word balance because I don't believe balance exists, but I've got how to juggle yeah. all of the things and keep the balls in the air that are important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's when I started to put last year was nice because the kids weren't always in school. We would just skip school and have uh, date days. So we'd have mm. skip days. And nice. so, except now this year, they're like, when's our next skip day? So I have to be like, okay, I need to schedule in a, a, a mom and son's date day coming up um, because they do, they look forward to it. And that's the, that, you know, if, if I can take a few hours off work and make them happy, then both worlds are happy at this point. Yeah. So it is no. And I think that's a great way of, you know, finding those boundaries to make sure that you stay within your content place, happy place. And like you said, all your balls are still up in the air and you're not dropping anything. Well, we're going to drop balls. I'm just going to jump right in there. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. There's going, there's no way but, to not drop one ever. <laughs> but, but we've, you know, there's some balls that can drop. Oh my oh. gosh. You know, do oh. I have to clean my house every single yes. day? That one can drop because yeah. I have this uh, podcast that I need to accomplish. I've got my business that I need to keep going. I really need to keep my relationship with my partner high up there don't want to ever drop that one yeah you know so figuring out which balls can you know kind of roll around at your feet for a little bit while you figure the rest of the stuff out yeah yeah and I work with a lot of um pregnant people and new parents and I, that's what I was told I was like who cares if your house is dirty and like if yeah. I were to come to your house and your house is clean something's wrong Honestly, yeah. something I'm like, I don't want to see a clean house. And I remember my midwife said that to me because they they come to us at day uh, 24 hours and three days post birth. And they're like, you know, if you're cleaning, you're not like, there's no reason that you are cleaning. You need to be on that couch resting with a baby. And yeah, the house should be dirty dishes in the sink because that is yeah. not the priority. And that's okay. It's the same thing, right? Like, you know, you don't need to vacuum every other day. Right. Uh, you don't need to do all the little things. You you can let them go for a little bit until you're ready to pull to pick that ball back up. Because eventually exactly. it will. Something else will go. Won't be as in, as exactly important. Exactly. And, you know, it's always the shift and the flow. Yeah. So great. Um. So then, as you're coaching people, do you find that there's like a maximum, not a maximum of time because people's goals are always different, but is there a time where like things just get stagnant almost and what to do at that point? In the coaching, stagnant in the coaching, uh, in the coaching or in business or life, any of like, sometimes people just kind of feel, hit that stagnant wall and they just don't know how, like they plateau and they don't know how to get through it. Even with coaches, sometimes it's just like how to get through that, that wall in to the next level. Oh, oh so I'm get, So that makes me think of a movie. Um, I love movies. Okay. There's a movie by uh, Simon Pegg movie and it's called run fat boy run. I cannot recommend this movie highly enough especially if you are in business for yourself because um simon Pegg's character uh he's a loser works a minimum wage job he's minimum wage and he's got a kid out of wedlock i hate that term wedlock i don't know why i just used it he's got a he's got a kid and he's not married to the mama but they're they want to get married but he runs away he ends and uh i'm not going to give away the whole story but here he is he's running Okay, run fat boy, run. He's running, he's running, he's running. And this is kind of like business. We're running, we're running, we're running, we're running, we're running. It's kind of like life. We're running, we're running, we're running. Finances, running, running, running. And I'm not a runner, but I do know runners. And there's this point during a marathon where they hit a wall. Mm -hmm. 
And it's like all of their energy reserves are gone. Mentally, they're gone. Physically, they're, they're, they're just about to fall over. But the ones who finish the marathon are the ones that hit that wall see through it for what it really is a mental block yeah break through it and keep going and i am a, i'm not a marathon runner but i like to do 510ks so and you i know totally the, know you that know. wall i've had that wall many times and i and i've never thought of applying oh. that to this so i love that it's mental Oh, it's, yeah, in it's absolutely place. Incredible. It's yes, your physical reserves are gone, your energy is gone, but our minds are so powerful. I want everybody to hear that. Your mind is so powerful that even when your body has nothing left to give, your mind can convince it that it still has a hundred percent. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's how you keep going in life, in business, in, in relationships, in everything. Mm -hmm. That's how you keep going. Health. Oh, health plateaus. You're trying to lose weight. It happens to everybody. You're mm -hmm. trying to release some of this weight from your body. And you get to a point where it's like, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. A lot of people give up then. Yep. And go back to to what they were doing before and yo-yo back up. The ones that succeed are the ones that allow their mind to convince their body that there is still more to go. Yeah, I love that. And now- Got to see Run Fat Boy Run. You've I got know, to see- I wrote it down. I'm like, all right, it's I got to so watch this now. <laughs> like maybe that'll be our, our movie. We do movies Saturday nights. So maybe that'll be a movie so uh, coming up soon. Um, now I feel like it would be slightly different applying. I'm thinking, cause a lot of people have imposter syndrome or mm. money blocks. Those are two big ones that I see. We see all the time people talking about, um, yeah. would you have any recommendations for either one of those or both of them? Absolutely. So the money blocks, the imposter syndrome, the outdated beliefs, mm -hmm. um, the limiting beliefs, yes. These are all things, honestly, and I'm not just saying it to say it. These are all things that can be transformed yeah. and transformed easily with the right coach. Yeah. Um, most of our money beliefs come from our family of origin. Like think about, think back to what, what did your mom and dad teach you about money? Not necessarily through their words, but also through their actions. Mm -hmm. What did they teach you about money? Did they teach you money doesn't grow on trees? Did they teach you we don't have money for that? We don't have, well, not even for that. We don't have any money. Yeah. How many parents have said that to their kids? Oh, we don't have any money. Mom, I, I would really love to have a candy bar at the checkout. Well, we don't have any money. Yeah. And then your kids start believing there's no money. There's no money. And guess what? That gets carried into your adulthood. Yeah. We and I know no I've, I've had to switch that. I worked on that a few years ago. Of we're choosing not to spend our money on that right now because it's hard exactly. to tell kids because they ask for a new toy every single time they're out. And I'm not buying them a new toy every single time that we're out. And I refuse to buy them candy bar. We don't eat candy bars. So they'll right. ask though. And I'm like, I ain't spending my money on that. <laughs> well, but, <laughs> but that's how we switch it. Of we're right. choosing to spend our money on other things right now. Right. So these, these limiting beliefs, these money beliefs, this imposter syndrome that I can't do it as well as Nikki Frazier does. So I better not ever try. I'll mm -hmm. fail. Mm -hmm. All of these things, <laughs> believe it or not, are beliefs that you cemented before you were five years old. Yes. Before yeah. you were five years old, you decided all of these things before you could even speak. You decided things about yourself. You decided that your voice wasn't important. You decided that I will never have money. You decided all of this before you were even cognizant of these choices, which oh, is why I down. say, which is why I say they can be transformed easily with the right coach because those beliefs and identities aren't really who you are. Yeah. I believe that we were all created to be a very specific way in this world for the time that we're here. 
And then we have all these beliefs and identities that overpower us and come in and squash us down. Those aren't who we are. Mm -hmm. And once we can transform those and get back to who we were designed to be, then we can step into this world and bring what we have to the world and what the world needs from us. Awesome. No, I like that. And I know we did a a bonus episode. uh, We released it January 5th, uh, this year, 2023, and all about breaking through your limiting beliefs. And it's a Mm -hmm. step-by-step we and like we tell you like if you want to if you want to do this write it down don't just listen I to listened, this podcast I listened this to is that an one, active yes. one did you yeah and it's like, like yes check uh-huh check good you need good to for do you. the work yes. on this yes. one <laughs> so it's not one to to do while running or while in the car or anything right. like that this is one where you sit at your desk and you work through this podcast <laughs> yeah and then is. if And then sometimes even, even in working through it, right. So I, I did listen to that episode and I was working through it with you, but sometimes even when you get to the end and you're like, okay, I'm ready for that. How do I get that though? That, and (laughs) that's the, that's the key. Okay. What's the next steps? Like, yeah, I worked through this and now, now we need to keep going forward and keep yes. and keep that momentum going because yes. it's, it is easy to fall off. And that is where the coach comes in and helps you keep that momentum going. Cause it's exactly. easy. Once you start rolling, it's easier to keep going. Yeah. And it's, I love, so I love being a coach. I'm just going to say it. I love being a coach, but the best part about being a coach is I don't coach the exact same person all the time. I coach different people in different stages at different places. And Mm -hmm. I love that. Like I have one client that she came in and she was already at this level. You know, she was already ready to level up. I have another client that's just starting and trying to level up. But the beautiful thing is, regardless of where you are in your journey, when you hire a coach, you're starting at zero. Yep. And then the coach helps you build from there. I like that. Oh, great. That's so true. All right. Well, if you could leave our listeners with any last minute advice or words of wisdom, I always like to say, what would you tell our listeners? Oh gosh, that's so funny. Cause I asked the same question <laughs> on my podcast, <laughs> but I'm never prepared for it when it's asked me. Oh gosh. You know, we can do anything that we set our minds to. Our minds are that powerful. We can accomplish any goal that we set our minds to, but we can't accomplish them all at once. Pick a target and shoot for that target until you achieve success. And success Mm -hmm. is different for everyone. Yes. Success for you is different than success for me. Mm -hmm. Determine what your success is and shoot at that target until you reach it. Then set up the next target yes, and do the same thing. Then set up the next target and do the same thing. We can do just about anything we set our minds to. Our yep. minds are that powerful, but we can't do it all at one time. And stop looking at the lane and the target beside you because they have nothing. Because <laughs> you're going to miss your, yours. Yeah. You're, you're no, totally going to miss your target. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. So when you're riding a motorcycle, riding a horse, They tell you, look where you want to go. Look where you want to go because the motorcycle, the horse, the bicycle, they, your Mm -hmm. car, when you're driving your car, if you're looking somewhere else, you will move towards that target. So look where you want to go, focus on where you want to go, shoot at your target. Don't worry about anybody else's. There's enough space in this world for all of us. Absolutely. Always. Always. (laughs) Always. <laughs> There's like how many billions of people in the world? I know. And with the technology we have, you can reach most of these people that there can be 20,000 aromatherapists, 20,000 coaches, 20,000 yes. whatever. And there's still enough people to fill your schedule to whatever your schedule wants to be. Absolutely. Yeah. And Phil is different for everyone too, right? Exactly. Yep. What if Phil for you is 10 people a day and Phil for me is three people a day? Yep. Absolutely. If I'm filling my schedule, that's my target. I can only be concerned with my target. Exactly. Yeah. I do want to let you know, I have a free gift for your uh, listeners. 
Awesome. I have a, a meditation that I would love to leave your listeners with because Absolutely. as a as a coach, my goal is to help you reconnect with your mind, your body, and your spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, people that I work with are completely disconnected. They're totally unemotional. And the first step to reconnecting is to reconnect with your body. Yes. So I have a meditation that I'm going to offer to your listeners. And I sent you, I'll send you that link that you can awesome. share. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. I so I wanted to give that to your, to your listeners as a thank you for inviting me on to share about coaching and how it can help people. Awesome. And we'll connect that in the show notes below. Um, I love it. I'm a huge believer. And I mean, I'm trained in meditation and hypnosis and mindfulness and all that too. So I truly believe it's one of the best ways to connect our mind, body, soul together. Like it needs to work together to be balanced and harmony and in, in the body. And you can manifest a lot through meditation and just get our nervous system back and all that stuff. So thank you so much. Our listeners, I'm sure are going to absolutely love it. And so now if people want to reach out and find you and connect with you and maybe have you as a coach, what is the best way for people to connect with you? So the best way is through my website, lemonbalmcoaching.com. Uh, and there's all the links on there for how to schedule a complimentary discovery call. I actually just said this on my Instagram the other day, I commit to always having a complimentary discovery call. Mm -hmm. There are big coaches out there that are making millions of dollars and they charge for their discovery calls. And that's great for them. But I remember being a young mom in my mom bubble beginning and I didn't have, uh, we didn't have the money. I'm yeah. just going to be honest. We were a um, military family with four kids. I stayed home. We chose for me to stay home, which means we chose to have no money. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't have hired a coach at that time. But if you get on a discovery call with me, I guarantee just in that discovery call, you're going to have a breakthrough. You're going to have a discovery. You will figure out something about yourself, even if you decide not to move on and coach yeah. with me. But on the website is the link for that. I spend most of my social time on Instagram. Again, Lemon Balm Coaching. Uh, that's where I spend most of my social time sharing information and encouraging people. Awesome. And then of course the aromatic chat podcast, where I chat with a yes. different aromatherapist every other week and I hear about your podcast. aromatic journeys. Thank you. Nice. Thank I love you. your podcast every week. I'm yeah. like, all right, who you, who's coming out this week? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So yeah, so those are the best ways I am on other social platforms, but honestly, I don't check them very often. So Great. Instagram or my website. Great. And we'll have all that in the show notes also. And I also just need to say before we part, I love the name of your business because it is just so perfect and I know and we had talked about this um at another point too where it was just like I I don't like like how could you pass that up like Melissa and Lemon Bomb there is it's the the most perfect name I know well at the beginning of this year at the beginning of 2023 one of my podcast episodes was my virtual assistant interviewing me and we got to talking about the branding behind Lemon Balm Coaching and, you know, my business has been up and down. I'm not going to lie. It's been, it's been a road. It's not just been, oh, yay, I started here and now I'm a success. That doesn't exist in the yeah. business world, just FYI. And, you know, I've dabbled with different niches and trying to figure out who it is that I serve, you know, all the things, who's your ideal client, mm -hmm. create your client avatar, market. All. I've been through all of those things. And um, the thing that we discovered is my branding has been right the whole time. He dabbled and tried to figure out who it is that I really serve. The branding was correct. Yeah. And now I finally settled into what the branding dictated, yeah. which is fabulous. You know, I, I, I mostly work with unemotional wrecks, those people who've stuffed it all down for years and years and years and years and can't feel anything anymore. Yeah. So Lemon balm is just a beautiful botanical that works on the mind in such a calming and transformative way. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us in this episode. We really appreciate it. That was such a wealth of knowledge and, you know, coaches are, they, they're a gift because they really help us just keep moving forward, which is what we yeah. need. Um, so thank you again for joining us and thank you to everyone who's listening in to this episode of Better Revives. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. This episode was brought to you by Essentia, 
a leading online aromatherapy school. You can join the free introduction to essential oil course at www.schoolofessentria.com. If you love this episode or you got a lot of value out of it, please make sure you share it with someone in your community who you think will enjoy it too. If you haven't already subscribed or reviewed the show yet, please go over to your preferred streaming platform and hit subscribe, then leave a review. This is the best way to help support us and we appreciate it. Email us with a screenshot of your review and you will be entered into our monthly draw for a free mini course. This podcast is for information purposes only. We are certified clinical aromatherapists and holistic health professionals. If you have a medication concern, please refer to your health team. Everyone's health is unique to themselves, so the topics and suggestions stated may or may not apply to you directly.